Number 7 Jatsekhan. I'll link that to make Link Cuba. I'll use Jatsekhan's ability. Bring yourself back. Make these two. Make Crystal on Hockey Firebrax. Hockey Firebrax's ability. Bring out Tesspot 1. I'll link Hockey Firebrax to make Link Cross. Link Cross's ability. Bring out two tokens. Then I'll use Link Cuba's ability. Tribute the token. Bring yourself back. I'll sync the spot one and the token to break. Put on the sinker. Put on the sinker's ability. Draw a card. I'll link Link Cross and Link Reba. Make make a fan base Ordon. I'll sync these three. Put on Savage Dragon. Savage's ability. Equip Ordon. Three counters. Next, I'll have. Next, I'll sync these two. Put on Mark Light. Set three. Pass. Um, I'll normal summon Don Zalug. Hey, it's Austin. So you play a non-meta casual deck for fun, but let's say you want to take the next step with it and take it to a locals or probably even a higher tier event. But the problem is, is that your casual deck can't really compete with these more powerful decks. So what can you do about it? Let's face it, not every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! is created equal in terms of power level along with years of power creep in between creating them. Your Trimadet from 2016 probably won't be able to hold up to today's standards of card power. But despite the lack of support for your favorite deck, that doesn't mean it's completely unplayable versus the top deck. It just simply means you just need... STAPLES! Ah yes, staples. Those things that keep your homeowner magazines from falling apart. Staple has been a part of the Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame since the beginning of the game with cards such as Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, Delinquent Duo. Staple comes in many forms and shape, but for today, we're going to be covering a few cards that can easily be separated to three categories that most staples are placed under. Hand Traps, Board, Clearance, and Draw Power. Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring is arguably one of the most powerful hand traps that has been released, but who can blame them? Hand traps are normally format depending on what's the best deck, but Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring's effect, being able to stop one of three effects, has made it one of the strongest due to its versatility. Effect Veiler is another well-known hand trap dating all the way back to 2010 that's been going in and out of format that definitely still has a place in today's metagame. Being able to stop an opponent's monster's effect during their turn can be a real turn stop, especially those combo decks that can't continue afterwards. Having a non once per turn cost is also pretty nice so that when you open up multiple copies of it, it isn't that bad because it was made back during those days when Konami thought not having a once per turn cost would be a bad idea. Alright, tribute one monster on your side of the field to inflict 400 points of damage to your opponent's life once. We can print this, nothing bad will come out of this. Nibiru the Primal Being is a recently released int trap that has already made an impact within the metagame. As the game has developed more and more throughout the year, so has combo decks and their ability to what is commonly referred to as an unbreakable board. And to combat that, Nibiru can stop these boards from ever happening. Nibiru the Primal Being can stop these boards from ever happening by stopping key moments in the combo or even punishing those who invest too much in their board. There are other hand traps we need a chance to cover today due to the vast amount of them. Such as Draw and Lockbird, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, Cypher and Gear Gamma, and much much more. But don't worry, I didn't miss any other important hand traps to talk about. Ah, what the fuck? Alright, let's talk board clearance. Board clearance is something that any deck can use, either in the main deck or the side deck. Board clearance, as you guessed it, refers to cards that simply deal with your opponent's board. You got classic cards like Raigeki, Dark Cold, or Heavy Storms, newer cards like Lightning Storms, Evenly Match, or even Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Super Polymerization can be seen as a board clearance, as it can get rid of your opponent's monster by using it to summon your own monster. Super Polymerization is a really powerful card that can punish your opponent. But its only real downside is that it's format depending, and despite the wide range of fusion monster it can summon, it really doesn't have a fusion summonable monster for every type of scenario. Alright, so I'm gonna end my field with IP Mascarina, Overload Savage Dragon, Herald of the Arc Light, and Block Dragon. Huh. Dark Ruler No More, in a way, can be seen as a board clearance as it can deal with your opponent's board to shut off your opponent's monster's effect for the turn, allowing you to play your cards without having to worry about your opponent's negation. But be careful as it doesn't get rid of your opponent's monster, only shut off their effect, so unless you have a follow-up afterwards to deal with their field, you might be finding yourself in the same position as you were before you even activated Dark Ruler No More. I'll activate Dark Ruler No More, shutting off your monster's effect this turn. Okay, sure. Then, um... I'll normal summon Don Zalug. Finally, let's discuss the final topic for today on how you can update your casual deck to the modern era, and that's draw power. Draw power, as it states, are cards that allow you to draw cards. Pretty self-explanatory, but be careful. Generic draw power in this game has always led to degenerate situations due to the lack of restrictions of them. 
Alright, draw two cards. We can print this. Nothing bad will come out of this. Draw power cards nowadays tries to have some sort of restriction to prevent it from being beat, such as having a hefty cost, a hard once per turn cost, or a restriction from it being too generic. One of the most popular draw cards that any deck can use is Power of Desires, which for the cost of Banshee of the top 10 cards from your deck, allows you to draw two cards. The ability to trade away 10 cards for simply drawing two cards is a huge benefit to nearly any deck that doesn't rely on important combo pieces. But that isn't to say that there will always be risks to using Power of Desires, as there will be times where you banish the card that you would have needed. Oh, I banished all three of my Dawn's Elude. The other generic draw power card we're going to talk about today is Pot of Extravagance, which is in the same vein of Pot of Desires, where for either banishing three or six cards face down from your extra deck, you get to draw either one or two cards. As the game has evolved, so has decks that heavily rely on the extra deck, but this isn't a case for older decks that were created back when they didn't really have a need for the extra deck, especially those older decks that only had like one or two boss monsters from the extra deck, where if you were to run them at max copies, you really wouldn't lose them. But of course, like Pile of Desires, you also run the risk of banishing key extra deck monsters you might have needed, especially those you don't really run multiple copies of. Alright, let's look at this extra deck from my Ice Barrier. Where the hell did my Trishula go? Of course, those are only two generic draw cards that you could have in your deck. There are other generic draw cards we didn't get a chance to touch upon, such as the limited Upstart Goblin where you can give your opponent 1000 life points for a card, or those with a harder restriction that can be used in certain decks such as Allure of Darkness or Paw of Duality. So there we go, we cover a bunch of generic cards that you can put into your casual deck to be able to compete with modern decks and hopefully put up a good fight against them. Now you might be asking yourself, if every casual deck can play these cards, why don't more people play them in their deck? Well, to honestly put, most of these cards are competitive cards used in the current metagame, and thus they have a higher price range for them that most players, especially those that only play casually with friends, won't be willing to spend for them. But of course, just because these cards are expensive in real life, doesn't mean you won't ever be able to play test with them. In fact, there exist many different types of online simulators for you to play test with these cards and to get a better understanding of them in your deck. In fact, let's try to take everything we learned today and try to update our Dark Scorpion deck with it.